Hi, thank you for joining. Mastering the art and science of product marketing. We are going to be covering four topics. Messaging and positioning, buyer persona, product launch, OKR and metrics. So let's dive in. The first is messaging and positioning. If there's one thing that we need to do right as product marketing, it's getting our messaging and positioning. This has an influence on what goes on your website, all the way to how you pitch and talk about your story. So what does it take to build together a good messaging and positioning? I'll be walking through a framework with some examples so that you can actually take this into action. We'll start with identifying your persona, understanding your customer pain point, value proposition, all the way to creating your tagline and subheading and your copy blocks. So what does it take to create one? Let's start with the basics. What and who is your buyer persona? Who is the decision maker that makes the go no go decision? Who is the influencer, the one that is your champion or the one that's going to be using your product? These are all folks that have a role to play as part of your buyer journey. Next is your customer pain point. What is the intent? What is the expertise look like today? And then we look at value proposition. Who is the competition? And what is our differentiator as compared to the competition? So to take an example, let's walk through a platform narrative. The buyer persona is a decision maker, a CIO, a CTO. The influencer is an IT manager. Now the customer pain point, this is a platform for a B2B SaaS. The customer pain point, the intent is there's a lot of disparate technology stack and we need a better way to manage the applications as well as the data. Now the expertise, is there is legacy as well as emerging technologies. How do you build a bridge between the two? So the value proposition when you're thinking about it, first is understanding your competition. What's the market landscape that you're in? If it is enterprise, is it mid-market or is it SMB? And then find your unique differentiator. Here for this example, it was about having a unified platform that was bringing your applications, your data, everything together. So let's look at defining your value proposition. The theme is the crux of everything. This can theme can add as your tagline, if that's an extension that you can look at. The key message is your what. What is it that you're trying to tell me? Your customer value is your why. Why should I care as your customer? Your benefits are your how. How can I achieve what I'm trying to achieve with your solution or your product? So for this example, the B2B SaaS platform, theme is connect everywhere, engage anywhere. The key message, your what, is modernize connectivity across applications and data. So you can see the theme, feeding into the key message. Your customer value, your why, is accelerate connectivity with a unified platform. That's your why. You want to accelerate connectivity. Benefits, your how, is be agile and collaborate across internal and external stakeholders. Now that we have defined our value proposition, let's look at positioning and messaging. To start off, when you are thinking about positioning, there are two factors. Who is the positioning for? Is it for the decision maker or is it for the influencer or both? So you may end up having two positioning statements. For example, if it is for the decision maker, our CTO, the CIO that we talked about, the positioning is about a complex IT landscape with emerging technologies and applications. So you're building the bridge between the legacy and new applications that exist today. That's how you can think about positioning. 
When it comes to messaging, it's about understanding your buyer journey. When you message is a key element as what you message. Whether it's in the awareness stage, the beginning when they get to know that they have a problem or a pain point. Is it in the consideration phase when they understand that they have a problem, now they're looking for a solution and they come across your product or platform? Or is it in the decision phase when your customer or your buyer understand that there's a need, knows that they have the budget to make the buying purchase, and they are looking for final proof points, customer stories to help validate that they're making the right decision to go with the specific solution. For example, if we are taking the decision maker and we are looking at that awareness stage, a digital foundation for pervasive and trusted connectivity is a message that will resonate with our CTO, with our CIO, and a message that is key to know that is important as part of the awareness stage. Now, these are all ways of how you can think about breaking down the messaging and positioning. Once you have done this exercise, then what ends up as the final product or the document is your messaging and positioning framework. You know your product, your solution, or the industry that you're going after. You have a description of what that product is. You have details about your persona, so your decision maker, you have details about the customer pain point that you're addressing, the value proposition, the proof points that you have. This would be value creation or market validation. You have defined that for your decision maker as well as either your business initiative lead or your influencer and practitioner. And then you've also looked at the competition, your top customers, what are their use cases, what are the partner validations that you have. You have also defined your tagline and your subheading because these are just as important when you are starting to put this together into a, uh, into a presentation, into a web page. And then putting together your copy blocks is a time saver. I have seen this personally in my experience working as a product marketing leader for over 10 years across B2B SaaS startups to Fortune 500 companies. And once you have these copy blocks, this is where you can share that information with other teams, whether that's within marketing or within the product organization. And if you're just starting as a startup, this is just as important because you will know how to tell your story in 25 words, in 50 words, and in 100 words. And if you have um, a press uh, update that you're giving or if you have an event that you're participating in, these are all great places that you could share that information in one go. And then also look at your messaging principles. This is where you're thinking about your unique differentiators and how you can actually stand by them. Can you actually give that confidence that this is the information that will make your customers select you over the competition? Now, we've talked about a lot of these aspects, and I hope you find this valuable information. So. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Polywork or on Growth Mentor itself. Happy to help you in your product marketing journey and to help you establish finding your product market fit. You can also read about the some of the work that I've done within product marketing, whether it's messaging, positioning, whether it's product launches, um, how to create your OKRs, and also thinking about bringing all of those elements of mastering the art and science of product marketing. Have a wonderful day and thank you so much for your time today.